the risks of raw milk consumption, um, even if you just think about the anatomical location of, you know, where the milk comes out and where the feces of the cow comes out, it's always going to be a risky product, which is why pasteurization of milk became sort of the standard back in the 20s and 30s. At that time, it was because of our fear of tuberculosis, brucellosis, uh, and a variety of other diseases that can be transmitted from the cow to humans via the udder, the milk and the udder. Pasteurization wasn't thought of to combat E. coli O157 or Campylobacter salmonella that are, in, in many respects, are those pathogens that we've really learned about much, much more in the last 25 or 30 years. We now know that they are common, quite common, in the feces of cows and that especially Campylobacter uh, is found quite frequently in raw milk. And so it is, it is a product, in my view, like sprouts, like unpasteurized juice, like leafy greens, that because there's no kill step, it's not heated, always has a high risk of, you know, illness. Raw milk proponents, um, you know, a lot of my issue with them is sort of the, many of the false medical claims that have no uh, clear scientific basis in reality. Everything from curing autism to uh, curing asthma, curing eczema, and or lactose intolerance. There's a lot of material that has gotten up on the internet that, you know, when loving parents have a kid who's asthmatic or a kid who has autism or a kid who has eczema and they're frustrated at trying to find an answer and a cure and they stumble on a website and says, oh, drink farm fresh raw milk and support your local farmer and cure your kid of autism, it may sound like a pretty good idea until that child develops E. coli 0157 and is in a ventilator in the hospital. I got to work with uh, some scientists at University of California, Davis, and I donated some money to help them build a website, which is called realrawmilkfacts.com. What we tried to do in that website is to create sort of a fair and balanced approach of raw milk facts as it relates to health benefits, pros and cons, um, the, the clear risks of raw milk consumption, and some examples of people who became ill, and what is their story about why did they start to drink raw milk? What did they think? And how do they think about that now that they've developed a severe illness or their child developed a severe illness. I think you have to be a really good consumer of, you know, all kinds of food products, but the ones where there's sort of medical claims to them or sort of religious overtones to them, I think you have to be pretty skeptical about. <laughs> <laughs>